Hello and welcome to Philip Brown's Computer Networking Lab. You're watching the instructional video Active Directory Sites and Services. We are currently now on the Dallas domain controller called Dell DC1. Let's take a look at our sites and services for Active Directory. This is the Active Directory Sites and Services window. Here is the container for the sites. Let's expand it. We can see that there are several containers inside. One for subnets of the different sites. We will identify each site by its IP address. Also, we have inner site transports that we use to communicate between domain controllers. They can use either the IP protocol or the email protocol SMTP. We also have a default first site name container, which is the default container for all of the Active Directory servers. Let's take a look at the servers. Notice that I have four servers, two for the Dallas area, one for Austin, and one for Houston. When we open up the NTDS settings, we see that we have a number of links which we can use to replicate between the given domain controller and another domain controller that is connected to. We have three sites, Austin, Dallas, and Houston. Let's put each domain controller in its given site. First, I'm going to rename the default first name site so that it becomes the Dallas site. Now let me add a secondary site. I'll add the Austin site. Notice that I'm required to choose a site link that will connect our domain controller in the Austin site. And now I'll create a site for the Houston domain controller. They all have containers that we can put the domain controllers into. Let me drag and drop the Austin domain controller into its container. And with the Houston domain controller, I'm going to right click it and use the move command in order to put it in the Houston site. Okay, now all the domain controllers are at the site they belong to. Now let's define the IP range for each site. Notice that we can use either IPv4 or IPv6 as a subnet to define the individual sites. I am configuring the Active Directory sites and services with the IP addresses that each site uses. Here it is, the sites for each location. And just for fun, let me create an IP subnet for the Dallas site that we're not even going to use. This will demonstrate that we can have multiple subnets for each site.
Okay, now let's take a closer look at the inner sight transport. Usually it's best to use the IP rather than the SMTP. The SMTP is more slower, but it's more forgiving if a networking error should occur. But most of the time you want to use the IP. I'm going to connect each site to another site by using these links. First, I'll create one from Austin to Dallas. Now, let me create a site link between Austin and Houston. And finally, I'll create a site link between Dallas and Houston. This way, every site will have a link to every other site. Notice that we can change the cost and how often the site links replicate by changing these values. We can even change the time schedule that it happens. This site link will only be active in time periods where these blocks are blue. Okay, let's take a look at the domain controllers again. I'm going to tell one of them to replicate right now. DC1 has just replicated with DC2. And now I'm having DC1 replicate with the Austin domain controller. This warning message is to show how to verify that the replication had occurred. Let's take a look at how we can make a domain controller a bridgehead server. When we go into this properties box, we can add the domain controller as a bridgehead server for that inner site transport protocol. And now let's take a look at how we can make it a global catalog. By right clicking this and going to properties, we can click on the checkbox in order to make it a global catalog. If we want to enable the universe group management caching, we need to right click this and go to the properties. And here we have a checkbox where we can activate that feature. Sites and services in Active Directory is a very efficient way to minimize the bandwidth needed to replicate between domain controllers in different sites. I hope this video has been informative and I thank you for viewing.